Hello there, I'm attorney Kelly Longton, founder of Kelly Longton Law, and today I want to talk to you about three things that you need to do when your spouse dies and their will, their trust has a disclaimer provision in it. Now losing your spouse is one of the most difficult things that you may face in life. And although it's important to take time to grieve, there are also some crucial steps that you need to take as soon as possible to address your spouse's accounts and property and to secure your own future in this process. Now, if your spouse's will or trust or your joint trust has a disclaimer provision, one of the time sensitive decisions that you'll need to make is whether to disclaim, meaning refuse to accept money or property that you will otherwise receive as a trust beneficiary. Now, state and federal law set forth requirements that you must meet in order for the disclaimer to work as intended. Now, under the Internal Revenue Code, a qualified disclaimer is simply an irrevocable, unqualified refusal to accept a gift or bequest a property interest. The disclaimer allows the interest in property to pass to someone other than the beneficiary who originally would have received it, and it is not considered a taxable gift from the first beneficiary to the next beneficiary in line. Now there's a special exemption under the Eternal Revenue Code that allows a surviving spouse to benefit from disclaimed money or property, but taking advantage of the invention does require some careful planning. Now a qualified disclaimer must meet the following requirements. It must be in writing as required by state law, it must be made within nine months after your spouse's date of death. You must not accept any of that property interest or any of its benefits prior. And the interest must pass to someone other than you without any direction by you. So it's the person who is disclaiming the interest. Uh, you don't get to say where it's going to go after the fact. Now, there are several steps that you should take to ensure that you make timely decisions and properly disclaim a property interest if this is what you choose to do. The first thing that you want to do is locate your estate planning documents. Now, your estate planning doc documents are one of the first sources of direction about what should happen next. Your spouse's documents contain the roadmap that indicate what your spouse wanted to happen to their property and their money, and they were likely designed in coordination with your own estate plan. A will or a trust may include a provision specifying how particular property should be handled if the original beneficiary disclaims their interest in it. Your estate planning attorney will need to have those documents to advise you about the best course of action. The second step you want is to meet with your estate planning attorney. Now the legal process that those who are left behind when someone dies is often complicated and it's important to seek the help of your estate planning attorney. Now because of the limited time during which you must elect to disclaim accounts and property, you will need to make an appointment with your attorney as soon as you can. Now your attorney will review your spouse's estate plan with you and help you determine if it contains disclaimer provisions and if so, whether you should consider disclaiming your interest in a will or a trust and the effect of such a disclaimer. The next step is that you want to include financial and tax professionals in your conversations with your estate planning attorney. In addition to your attorney, you want to involve the advisor, the accountant, and other financial or tax professionals uh, so they're all on the same page about what this looks like for you from an estate planning point of view and taxes. The team of professionals will help you determine the value of the accounts and property that you will inherit from your spouse as well as the value of your own estate to determine if a portability election will provide adequate protection or if disclaiming some of the accounts and property in your spouse's estate or held in trust for your benefit is the better strategy. They will help you consider all of the important variables, including the impact of a disclaimer on your family members. Now, will they have to pay estate taxes at your death if you do not disclaim your interest in the trust? Or will the beneficiary who receives the inheritance after a disclaimer be negatively impacted, for example, by increased income taxes if they receive trust income that pushes them into a higher tax bracket? So a lot of things need to be looked at at this stage. 
Now, disclaiming your interest in a will or a trust is a strategy that you may not have considered, but it may be a great way for you to achieve your estate planning and tax saving goals. So if you live in Master New Hampshire, we can help you evaluate your unique circumstances to determine whether a disclaimer will benefit you and your loved ones, as well as assist you in meeting any of those looming deadlines and avoiding some possible pitfalls. So I hope you enjoyed uh, learning more about disclaimers when it comes to estate planning. I'm attorney Kelly Longton from Kelly Longton Law. And if you want to learn more about estate planning, please like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Thank you. Have a great day.